Hello, this is Dan McKeown, and I'm doing a screencast about grunt. Now, uh, this is chapter two. In chapter one, we looked at my grunt setup that allows uh, me to put uh, something into source and then have uh, it, when the grunt task is, default task is run, have it come out into build, um, having been converted with one of the plugins that I use, for example, uh, SCSS to CSS or uh, JavaScript to Uglified JavaScript uh, or TypeScript to JavaScript. So having done that, now in uh, Chapter 2, we're going to take a look at how Bootstrap has Grunt set up. Now, Bootstrap, as uh, you may know, is a popular front-end library. Now, uh, as I'm making this podcast, they've just come out with version 4 in alpha form. Now um, they are using uh, SAS and uh, they've added a lot of new features. So like a lot of web developers, I want to see what's there. Now, as you can see, they uh, currently uh, do not have the compiled version available as I make this, but uh, the source is available. You can download that. Now we've downloaded that. Take a look at our directories and uh, just downloaded it here. Okay, let's rename it just bootstrap and let's put it into my documents directory. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the instructions that Bootstrap gives uh, for setting it up. They're using Grunt, uh, but we've got to take a look. Um, we have to be able to use Node and NPM as well as Ruby and Bundler. Since we have those and uh, we've uh, done uh, those steps, we need to go uh, navigate to the bootstrap directory and let's take a look contents okay so now what they want us to do there is run npn install that'll make sure it takes care of all the dependencies and then after that they want us to install with bundler and then make sure we run the bundle command as well. Have we added our password? Oh. All right, now, while we're uh, waiting for uh, NPM to install all that, uh, we, let's take a look at what we can do with Grunt. Now, run Grunt uh, to run the test and compile the CSS. So, um, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the, the key command. We just, it looks like they added that to the default task. Uh, so, uh, let's see how far along we are with this. 74%. New features on the Bootstrap blog post. Now they're using the cards uh, concept. Uh, they're not using the wells and thumbnails and panels. So that's a, that's a change. They have this thing called Reboot. Now there's been the CSS reset uh, concept and then there was normalized CSS was very popular and they're trying to kind of expand that uh, into a, you know, a way, uh, to, you know, to, to basically standardize uh, the, uh, the the, the uh, template that they're working on, the canvas that they're working on. I don't know, those are all both overloaded terms, so there's got to be like a right term for that. Okay, so now we are ready to install, go over to here, 
and uh, we can go to gem install bundler which actually we already have installed let's just run bundle All right, so the Ruby bundle installation has to happen too. All right, so now that we've done that, let's take a look at our directory. All right, let's run grunt. So this will run the grunt default task if it's wired up right. Okay, well, it, some of it worked and there were some warnings. Let's take a look what we have here. Okay, and let's call that up in Sublime Text. Let's call this directory up. Okay, so after all that, uh, this is the CSS for Bootstrap 4.0.0 Alpha. And we have uh, compiled it from the SCSS that we downloaded. And uh, although it looks like there are some errors, uh, overall the uh, ability to compile the SAS uh, seems to be intact. So we'll scroll down real quick here. It looks like there's of course grid system and stuff like that uh, so there'll be plenty of time to explore the bootstrap uh, CSS uh, uh, thanks for watching the latest in the grunt video series